Well, hey guys, my name is Miles Shank, and today I'm going to be answering kind of a question, a series of questions that I've been getting a lot on set, and it's from mostly people that haven't worked with Steadicam operators, or maybe they worked with them once, and they kind of just want to know the lay of the land a little bit. So today we're going to cover that specifically targeted towards assistant cameras, uh, first ACs, second ACs, um, anybody who kind of touches the camera, gets near an operator, and just kind of wonders, how do you work with a Steadicam operator? So let me just start out and say that if you work with 10 different Steadicam operators, you'll get 11 different opinions on how to work with a Steadicam operator. So this is in no way the rule book. Uh, this is in no way the, the union right way. Uh, this is just the way that I tend to operate, and which is a, a good workflow for me on sets. Uh, commercials, uh, I was on a short film this morning and just kind of thought about the same, uh, the same principles keep coming up when I talk to my ACs. And so let's just start out here. Uh, this is your basic Area Alexa mini package. Uh, I probably fly uh, Area Alexa minis and mini LFs more than any other camera. Um, Reds are probably, you know, in there too. So it's basically however you want to build your camera. That's you know where, where we're going to start here. This is just a basic build. Um, your battery's attached here. We have an EVF on. However, I'll cover that in a second. Uh, we do have a clamp on matte box. And then uh, we have, of course, the Teradek here like on the side. Uh, again, an AC didn't build this. This, was, this is actually my camera, and I built it. So uh, it's very not as clean as many other ACs who I work with. Some fantastic ACs out there. Uh, I'll shout out Evan Lucy uh, from the Black and Blue blog. He's uh, one of my favorite ACs to work with. Um, just always just seems to know, uh, you know, before something becomes an issue, uh, how to fix the problem. <laughs> I think that's really what an assistant camera uh, is so good at doing, uh, changing the batteries, changing the mags, uh, before you know, the director, the DP, anybody really has to think about it. So, uh, yeah, anyway, this is, uh, like I said, not, not the neatest uh, cabling. I've actually unhooked the EVF already. So I'll just go ahead and take that off because let's just pretend like our camera settings are already set. And I actually use the, um, like the, the Wi-Fi for the camera quite often on my phone. So I'll talk about here in a couple minutes how to go from low mode to high mode. And I can do all the setting changes uh, on my phone there, or uh, if you have a WC4 wireless control, uh, which this is not an Airy follow or not an Airy Fizz, uh, you can do a lot of those settings on the Fizz. Not really the deeper menu items. So something to keep in mind: you may have to plug this in and out. Um, there is actually I don't have one. I need to get one actually. Okay, I'll get one after this video. There's actually a, a mount here. It's like 80 bucks or something, and you can attach it to uh, 3/8 or a quarter 20. And then it has the same airy standard uh, little EVF mount. So you can actually mount this right on the back here. It's nice. It does add uh, a little extra weight, uh, a little extra weight that's higher up on the rig, which we'll cover that in a second too. So tend, I just tend to take it off. And then we can change things on our phone, like I said. So yeah, that's just one, one little thing I have. Uh, let's see here. So this is, um, <laughs> this is actually my uh, 4K Teradek. So this doesn't come on every set. It's just uh, I like to keep it in the car as a backup uh, in case something goes wrong. And then this is just a Nucleus uh, follow focus. I think it's like the best follow focus you can get for like a thousand bucks. So, you know, WC4, Preston. I mean, there's just so many better units out there in the world. But these are like, if we don't have anything, I have them. And uh, they have coming and, and help. Uh, they saved the day before. So, yeah, let's just get down to this here. This is the Steadicam M1 sled. Uh, now they do have an M2, and the biggest difference, uh, before you get the comments there, is M2 has kind of a smaller, uh, it's kind of like a, like a tow box here on the bottom. Uh, the M1 I actually like a little bit better. Has, um, it just, uh, ergonomics are a little bit better. Uh, the M2, however, uh, does have an integrated volt. And now you might ask what a volt is. This here is a, is a gimbal. Um, I won't get into the Volt because this is going to take a longer, longer time there. If you're interested in learning more about the Volt specifically, head over to uh, Tiff and Steadicam. Uh, they have so many great resources that those guys have made about using this, uh, proper even maintenance, um, you know, just how to get up and going. So, oh yeah, they give you shirts and stuff if you stop by the office too. So uh, this, is, um, this is like the, the motors here. Uh, the actual Volt unit though is here, this box here. 
is really the electronics of it. So this is the M1, like I said. The M2 has this box integrated into the top stage. This is the top plate here, top stage, top plate. So this is the top stage, yeah. And, um, you know, uh, every, every rig might be a little more customized. This one is fairly standard, straight from Tiffin. I haven't really done too much to it. Uh, I just think they made a good slip and it's working for me. So this is, uh, you know, kind of your standard, well, not so standard maybe. Um, this is not airy standard, just uh, keep, in, keep in mind. So if you're a steady cam operator, if you guys want to go from steady to sticks, like pretty quickly, uh, tripod, uh, they make an SOS plate, steady on sticks. And that is a really good asset to have. So this is just like a standard uh, Tiffin steady cam plate here. So just something to, you know, something maybe to ask your, your steady cam operator as you're like prepping uh, and thinking through the, the shot list and all that. Um, so yeah, this is a uh, yeah, basic build. So here we, the first thing I do as an operator, when someone hands me the camera, you know, they put it on my cart. And I will say too that not every steady cam operator is going to use a cart. Uh, a lot of us like to use um, just like a wheeled, uh, like three leg stand. Uh, those are really great for travel jobs, uh, really good just for tight spaces and all that. Uh, I just really prefer the innovative carts. They are solid and they're really great. And actually, while we're on that case, uh, you'll see I have some cases below here. That's intentional. Uh, this case is mostly filled with batteries. And then, uh, you know, this might be some extra AKS. Uh, right now I have uh, some lenses in there. So if you are using a cart, just keep in mind, uh, that when we put the camera on here, a lot of weight is going to be hanging off the cart. So you always want to have weight on the other side of the cart. Now, I've been on shoots where, you know, we're using a teleprompter on an Alexa Mini LF and we have Cook Anamorphics and it's a heavy, heavy rig. And in that case, I actually have two 15-pound uh, sandbags. I bring those along sometimes. Uh, you can always ask for G&E. But I will put, you know, a sandbag on here every now and again. <laughs> But I have a bunch of these little hypercore batteries, and uh, a case of those seems to keep everything down pretty, pretty good there. So I, I do tend to watch, keep, keep that in mind, because I know guys, other operators who uh, have warned me and told me that their whole um, cart has, has actually flipped over before with camera and steady can. It's just a whole mess. So don't find yourself there. Uh, and also keep that in mind too, if you're going to, uh, as an AC, if you're kind of rummaging through some cases, uh, you know, you might want to ask your steady cam operator, like, hey, like, are you cool if I get your batteries out or prep any of those or anything? Uh, some steady cam ops don't want you to touch any piece of their gear, uh, while, you know, the far other side of a steady cam operator might want you to set up the whole rig. <laughs> so also something to keep in mind to ask them as, a, as a, an AC. So typically, uh, I'm not too picky as long as everybody puts everything back. Uh, my ACs can, um, you know, keep rotating batteries on chargers. It's very common. Uh, typically, I don't like whenever people grab my tools out of there because these tend to go missing a lot. Uh, so I cover everything with just like a tape um, or, you know, if you're really cool and you have stickers with your name on it and stuff, that's pretty cool. So anyway, that's that. Now let's get into the nitty gritty here. So I will um, get the camera and kind of figure out like, all right, do we need a top flag for this shot? It's not very sunny and I don't think we'll need to check with the DP. I always basically run things by the DP uh, or the director. So, you know, this is the Bright Tangerine uh, three stage kick, goes down to two stage, great map box. But let's say I don't want this hanging off of here because uh, a thing to keep in mind about Steadicam is you want to have everything tight on the camera, tight on the sled so nothing shifts around while you're operating. But also you want to just cut down on things that might like add a little vibration to the shot. Uh, and you don't think about it when you're on sticks or even handheld. Um, but this is just, just enough that it has a little play, a little wiggle to it. So you might want to remove that. Now, what I do is essentially just kind of grab it. If you've ever used an easy rig, um, you kind of want to know where your balance point is from, you know, forward to back on the camera. So yeah, let's just kind of grab that and seeing. Now our balance point is pretty much right over here, the Teradek here. It's pretty much, uh, I think about where the sensor is on the camera. So I'll kind of flip that. Oh, now you see that, something shifted. The battery plate just slid back on me. <laughs> so there you go. Lesson learned. So 
Lock that off. And now we have no play. OK, yeah. So our center is still there. It's about right here. And you want to try to keep the weight lower to the plate, because it's going to be lower to uh, the center of gravity here, which is like the gimbal. And that is um, going to save you a lot of, like, a lot of weight and uh, length that you might have to add on the opposite side. Think of like a teeter-totter when you're a kid, you know? Move closer and move farther back. Think about like moving farther back on it makes you heavier, farther forward, makes it a little bit lighter. So anyway, um, yes. So something else is like you see these cables aren't moving. These are like tied down there pretty good. So you definitely are going to want um, a lot of cable ties uh, as an AC. Just carry that kind of stuff with you. Um, this, like I said, is <laughs> not the right mount to put a Teradac on here. Again, uh, ACs normally have um, uh, something to put, a, a, you know, a Teradec onto your like, tilt cage or whatever it is that will really leave it secure. This is just more for like this intents and purpose here. So yeah, let's flip this around. And this actually uh, has a little mistake on here. It has a little tripod plate from a Sackler. So let's take that off. And now you take your plate here. Uh, the M1 top plate is nice because it has these threads that hold your 3 8 screws uh, or your quarter 20s. I hardly ever use quarter 20s, but you can put those on there if you have like a Sony or like a smaller camera. Uh, so yeah, remember our center balance is about here. Um, so we kind of take our plate here, figure that, and then we'll go. This kind of has like a front and a back in a way. I'll show you here in, in a couple minutes. Um, yeah, and of course you just put your 3 8 screw in here. So that's tight. Camera is uh, ready to go. So let's put that on. This camera in particular, or this uh, steady cam plate actually, um, kind of like sits down in there and then rocks down. And you hear that snap and it has a safety so it can't slide out. Uh, now there actually is like a lever on the side of this one here. And yeah, you flip that over and it's like pretty, pretty like a forceful, <laughs> you know that it's locked. So yeah, that's on there. I have to give the camera like a little shake, make sure there's nothing jiggling or falling off there. So our camera is locked down tight. And now a question I get very often from ACs is, what, what should I manage on the camera? What do you want me to, to touch? What do you want, like not want me to touch? And I basically say, hey, anything above this top stage is all yours. It's your department. Go ahead and you know, work on the Teradec, batteries, whatever needs changed, mags. Uh, I got everything from um, top stage down. <laughs> it's kind of like the easiest way. So this is my point of cross here is, uh, you know, you can come out of uh, Teradec or hopefully you can get maybe uh, a clean feed or if you want levels or something off of your camera, just snap into there. And again, you just want to make sure that these uh, wires are tucked away. And yeah, so like you said, or like I said there, nothing is moving on here. That's pretty key. Now this is ready to go and we're ready to balance it. So we'll unlock it. And then this is, this is something where like an AC might help you. Um, we're going to flip this top here and make sure that's a little bit loose. So I like to just kind of put a leg underneath of it. So it's not just like, you know, all the weights on your back. I'm just like literally holding the bottom stage on my thigh. Uh, it's also kind of nice if uh, AC wants to, if you're in the middle of a field or something, you know, like you can't get the weight off of the steady cam operator. Uh, sometimes you can, you can grab it there, you can throw it on your shoulder, it might hurt for a while, but yeah, this is pretty comfortable. I could just stand here for a while, but just go ahead and throw that on there. And something to keep in mind with the Volt gimbals is just to try not to like get these uh, snagged or caught on anything while you're working on it. So if I let this go, um, this is, you know, <laughs> really uh, unbalanced here. And essentially, it just shows me that the weight is kind of just really far back, of course. So one uh, big push that I can do is actually just like kind of slide it forward here. Like I said, there's a safety on it, but pretend like there isn't. And this is, uh, this is kind of the, the art of steady cam operating <laughs> is balancing this thing it's kind of a joke i guess but all right let's go uh, so now we're kind of like looking a little bit better here uh, it's kind of got like a little lean to it so we will go ahead and uh, adjust our our knobs here and get that centered up 
So this uh, top stage is really nice because it actually has a little level built in. So if you see me staring at the back of the sled, I'm probably just looking at this thing. And it is pretty solid there. All right, so looking pretty good. Now this with the vault, uh, typically a steady cam traditionally has a, like a drop time. So the drop time is essentially like a 90 degree, like basically how long it takes the sled to go from here, drop 90 degree to here. And now the general rule of thumb is about three seconds, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, until it actually hits that 90 degree point. Now, this is nice because I can run the sled like this. I can turn the volt completely off and do a drop time like a normal steady cam. And I do that sometimes. Um, but this uh, volt actually requires you to do like a neutral balance. And so, like I said, uh, if you want to look more into the volt and all that, uh, Tiffin has great resources, some really good um, uh, YouTube videos out there explaining how to do this. So essentially, I'm just like moving the post up through the gimbal and back down through the gimbal and just trying to find that sweet spot. And every build is a little bit different. If you change uh, filters, if you change mags, or if you put a mag in it, like you bounce it without a mag, put a mag in it, probably change your weight a little bit. Um, filters for sure will change your weight just a little bit. And of course, lens changes will always change your weight just a, just a little bit. And this is looking pretty good. So you really just don't want any movement on it. All right, so we'll lock that off, stand it upright. And we are probably, you always need like a little, a couple last little tweaks on it here. So we're just gonna adjust these and looking pretty good. All right, so yeah, didn't take that long to balance this one. Um, yeah, it's basically balanced. So it might be a little more precise, uh, but for the sake of this video, we can just get rolling with it here. Um, yeah. Now, like I said, this is a clamp on mat box. So one thing that you're gonna wanna just be careful, like I guess know about, <laughs> is that your camera is not just gonna be like facing this way, um, you know, tilting, panning and all that, but your camera will actually now be, of course, you know, facing like that, like especially if you have it on your shoulder. Or, you know, this is where it gets scary, is <laughs> you see me, see me put my hand out like that. So here you have it like, you know, the camera might be face down at different points. So if you have a clamp on matte box, you want to make sure, just, just make sure that this little guy here, the little knob is just snug. Uh, I have seen these come off uh, and you know, if it's on grass, great. If it's on a sidewalk or something, you might chip or break a filter altogether. Uh, it's just a bad place for everyone. So if you're an AC working with steady cam up, don't assume the steady cam is going to check all those knobs and dials. I try to, but it really depends on who you're working with, what this set is like. Um, but yeah, as an AC, just go ahead and try to like think about everything up here and just you know keep it all tight, keep it all tight. And especially if you change a lens, just uh, go ahead and put it on, give it a little shimmy, you know, and then just go ahead and snug it again. You just don't want that coming off because these filters are like 350, 450, some of them, so. Don't go broken, breaking black pro mist. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, this camera luckily has internal NDs. So anytime the DP is like, hey, we want to, you know, stop, uh, we want to stop down, take it down to a 2, 2.8, um, add some more ND. That's super easy with a flick of a button. It doesn't really change my weight. But just take the note, if you're DPing, steady came up, uh, especially on a red ecosystem where your NDs are all going to be, you know, out this way from the sled, uh, that you're going to have to, probably rebalance a little bit. Uh, usually an ND is just gonna take me to go to this forward aft adjustment and just kind of like throw it back, throw it forward a little bit. Uh, some lens changes will do the same. If it's a really big lens, uh, then I'll normally just have to go, you know, slide the whole thing again, do this whole thing again, balance it all. So anyway, uh, the advantage of a vault, uh, this is why I really love it and why I say to snug this thing is because let's say, you know, your operator is doing the thing and you want to go to low mode. Now low mode with the Volt is just as simple as turning the whole rig upside down and you're balanced. So that's the one perk of having like a zero balance here. Uh, now more traditional rigs with the drop time, you will have to reset. So that's, you know, on some of these commercial shoots you could probably get away with it. Uh, it just depends how tight time is. Uh, if you're gonna have time to like rebalance and reset. You saw it took a couple minutes. So for me, uh, I'm just kind of a simple kid. 
I like to just take my monitor up here and just kind of swing that down towards me. And then uh, an operator will almost always kind of grab, usually, not always, but usually they grab like right below the gimbal. Uh, it's just kind of where you get like a good control over things. And yeah, so if the mat box wasn't tight, it falls off <laughs> when you're flipping it like that. So it's just something to keep in mind there. And essentially, you're ready to fly. So let's talk real quick about what you do with the operator wearing the vest and you know, working with someone while you're actually like shooting. So again, as an AC, I, I appreciate it. Don't, don't always have to do that, but I appreciate ACs who might flip this around for me as I'm changing this out. It's just one less thing I have to do. And then if you are an AC that is taking a steady cam, remember, if you put that down, swing the lock. Make sure that thing is not going anywhere. So here I have on the uh, EXO vest. It is uh, made by Steadicam, and it's one of my favorite vests because I run really hot. <laughs> I feel like I'm always the first to sweat. So this thing is like, I mean, it's about as breathable as it can get, really. Uh, you know, Walter Classic makes a great vest, too. Uh, it's a little hot on my back, kind of seals it all in. Very comfy, but a little warm. Uh, again, I really like the EXO vest, so uh, that's what I tend to use all the time. Um, this is your, like, what they call the socket block down here. And this is your arm. This is really the meat and potatoes of Steadicam. This is why, uh, this is what the operator, like, you know, relies most on. Um, so this will attach to the socket block, like that. Snugs it in here. This is the G70X. Uh, it has a 70 pound weight capacity. Uh, this is not 70 pounds, thankfully. And just keep in mind that like while an operator um, is operating, that the weight is, you feel it. Um, it's more like a climbing backpack. I would, I would explain to people about like where the weight kind of goes. So it's more like on your hips, uh, shoulders are a little more free. They're there, but you know, a little more free. Um, yeah, so, okay, we're unlocked here. Put this on. And now we are flying. Now I had a, a heavier rig on here this morning, so it's a little bit, you know, out of tune. So let me just uh, adjust these knobs here quickly. Again, this is why I also love the G70X. The G50, uh, I believe, also has these. So you see you have to use like Allen wrenches on these. So yeah, we are flying. Move this aside. And now I'll engage the volt here. So to engage the volt, click that on, turn this guy on, and boom. You have uh, perfectly level horizons uh, wherever you go, which is really nice. So I'll just turn that off for now though. But yeah, this is your basic Steadicam setup here. Um, there's really not too much an AC has to keep in mind, except that like, uh, I don't know, if you're, uh, say, adjusting motors or changing anything, or like I said, like, uh, oh, I forgot to put a card in or something, like, go ahead and, you know, tell, and maybe maybe the Steadicam op might want to dock. Uh, typically, if it's something like a card or maybe a filter, anything heavier than a filter, I like to, like, rebalance it. But, uh, yeah, and you can, again, tweak it, balance it all, like, or adjust it all while you're working on it. So, yeah, and then, of course, you can go low mode with it. Uh, keep an eye on batteries. If you can use the same battery uh, throughout the day working on Steadicam, just makes life that much easier because you know you could come throw a brick on it, take this brick off, and it's the same weight. So that's you know and something else that doesn't need to take time to rebalance. Um, just remember anything that you're like taking off of it or adding on to it could take some time to rebalance, but normally it doesn't. It's not too bad. So that's just kind of the essentials, the 101 of working with a Steadicam operator. Uh, something else is just to be considerate when it comes to food, especially coffee. Uh, just don't set it like, you know, probably on the cart if they have a cart or, you know, if they have one of those little uh, wheeled stands or something like that. Uh, maybe just, hey, are you cool if I put my coffee in here? No, nah, okay, cool, whatever. So even if the Steadicam up is like, you know, like me, I'll have the vest and arm and I'm trying to drink water because I'm sweating all day. Uh, you know, I might accidentally set it up here, down there or something. Uh, even if they do it, don't do it. So I have a little robo cup way over here, and it's where uh, the coffee goes on, <laughs> obviously. And then I uh, always keep a big water bottle. I might go through one to four of those a day, uh, depending on, you know, how hot it is. 
And uh, yeah, I mean, it's if you want to be courteous, you totally don't have to be. Uh, you can check and see if they need water, need some snacks, something like that. Because remember, they're they're holding 40, 50 pounds sometimes, uh, and they're burning calories. Like you just burn calories all day. So typically, when I'm operating on like a 10-hour or you know maybe a 12-hour or something, uh, I'm just I'm chewing through food like just left and right. <laughs> down any water bottles you're literally like essentially holding weights on you all day long and you're moving around so just something to think about oh one other thing might be check with G&E and see if you can steal an apple box they might appreciate sitting down every now and again uh, just as much as you would so yeah um, also keep in mind that all of the new steady cams have so many electronics built into them it's I mean it's essentially like the electronics that are in your camera <laughs> So if you're a little careless with like a water bottle or something, you know, just don't try not to get anything on, <laughs> like sled and all that. Uh, thank God it hasn't happened to me. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've heard of some operators like falling. Um, uh, it's very unfortunate and, and, you know, busting out their sleds, cameras and stuff. So that's that's kind of another thing to uh, ask them if they need a spotter sometimes. Uh, you're probably pulling focus if you're our first AC. Uh, maybe a second or, you know, a grip or somebody who just might be available um, <laughs> to entrust their life <laughs> to this person. Just kidding. But you can, uh, you know, you grab onto the back of the XO vest or a lot of vests, uh, Walter Klassen's vests have handles and stuff. So, you know, just be considerate of like, okay, they're focusing on a monitor that's by their feet and that's about all they can see really is, you know, the monitor. So when it comes down to stepping off of curbs or all that, most of Steadicam moves, you are walking backwards with the shot going this way. So you're not typically looking for cars, people coming, poles. <laughs> There's all kinds of things. So, uh, you know, just be a kind of human being. Uh, be considerate. And it's really not that difficult to work with Steadicam. So I hope this video helps a little bit. Uh, feel free to comment below. You can follow me on Instagram. Uh, I will answer those messages probably much faster. So, yeah, uh, happy shooting.